One of the biggest ever leaks of offshore secrets. Millions of financial records dubbed the Paradise Papers. It was a data leak of mammoth proportions this week. The data was shared with CBC, Radio-Canada, and the Toronto Star after it was leaked to the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. Involving more than five times more Canadian companies and individuals than last year's Panama Papers. Holy moly, 3,400 Canadians and company. Reams of data detailing offshore tax avoidance and potentially illegal tax evasion. Under the current system, it's easy to get dirty. Don't go there, man. Don't go there. Generating moral outrage and politically embarrassing stories. It's the Liberal Party and the Prime Minister who are being attacked for their connection to the Paradise Papers. But before the headlines came months of poring over those documents. Investigative journalists Valerie Ouellette and Zach Dubinsky were part of the CBC News team involved. So how did they search for those stories while navigating the strict rules that come with one of these projects? Hello to you both. And I was just thinking as we watch these pictures that I know that it, our work is about teamwork. But, you know, explaining what the data journalists do as part of this team is something we haven't really done very often. So, Valerie, I mean, you get this trove of documents. Is this the dream assignment or the nightmare assignment? I think it's a little bit of both, actually. It, it was both terrifying and very exciting to be brought into this project because 13 million documents, it's... It's just so much, and it's so exciting to a data journalist who wants to tell the big story, the big picture, and look for trends. But it's also like finding a needle in a haystack. And to try to do it, Zach, while maintaining the secrecy that the ICIJ insists upon mm -hmm. in order to maintain the journalism while they're piecing everything together, you've still got to be able to talk to partners in this project in other countries, even within Canada. How do you do that? Yeah, well this, this is a project that had the most confidentiality and the most number of, of steps uh, to ensure that, that, that I've ever had. And I've worked on three of these big data leaks now. So uh, we had things like end-to-end -end email encryption, we had document encryption, we had a special program we used to chat amongst ourselves, we didn't use regular email. Uh, and then when we were even just talking around the office, we had you know, code names for this project. Uh, for the individuals involved and uh, we could only talk to certain sources under very confidential terms so uh, it was it was really really a lot of steps to try and keep the lid on things and and not allow any leaks ourselves and Valerie as you're going through these documents I think people sometimes imagine when we say we've got all these banking documents that every one of them is a smoking gun and tells an amazing story but there's a lot of stuff in there that you just you don't know what you're looking at it's, it's a very unstructured leak when we compare it to the Panama Papers. So it means that sometimes you could, it could be days before you find something that's a nugget that's really interesting. And I know you came across people's personal emails. Yeah, we were, we were chatting about this uh, earlier, but uh, one thing that I found was I got curious and just entered the name of Quebec singer Celine Dion in the leak and I found songs and love letters between co-workers and people's grocery lists and, and just poetry and haikus and uh, so many things that were, that were like a window, a secret window into Applebee employees' lives. And how did you find the experience of, you know, you are looking at people's private emails and every day I'm still stunned at what people will put in emails, mm -hmm. knowing that they get out all the time. You're looking at decades worth of information from this firm. Yeah. So uh, very quickly you have to decide there's certain things that you kind of have to quarantine off and say well, there's, there's not a very strong public interest in that. You know, we're, we're journalists. The stories we need to tell have to be about things that are compellingly in the public interest. So, uh, you know, I'm looking for things about uh, people in power, abuse of power, uh, potential criminality, um, stories that um, really there, there's a need that these stories need to get out. And so you very quickly have to kind of section off um, people's passports, their, their children's drawings that they've uploaded to their server at work, uh, the personnel files that we've had access to. Um, and it's, it, you know, it's tempting to look into that, but it takes, you know, there's restraint and discretion involved. And uh, we kind of have to ignore that. Uh, Valerie, it's interesting too that whenever we get these projects, there is a steep learning curve in terms of understanding the topic that drives the data. So it's financial data in this case, and suddenly you're trying to figure out a financial background that isn't necessarily a part of journalism. Yeah, I'm a data expert. I'm not a fiscal expert by any means, so it was really difficult for me because of all the secrecy. I couldn't just pick up the phone and call 
an expert or call a source and just try to understand what is this document I'm looking at? What's an incorporation certificate? What is uh, this invoice I'm seeing? Is this a relevant document? Is this a key document or is just this just some minutes from a meeting that I don't really care about? Well, the, you know, the task of this program is to try to explain to people what investigative journalists do when we don't see their work being published, and you've done a great job of that. So thank you both. Thanks.